there are like four things you really need in your, in your skincare routine. The first is a vitamin C serum, and that starts in your 30s. You apply it every morning. It helps brighten your skin. It helps retard and prevent hyperpigmentation and age spots on down the line. It's an antioxidant. It helps keep, uh, it helps protect your skin cells against oxidation and irritants. And then I tell folks they need to, especially as you get into your 40s, add peptides, which are amino acids that we produce in our skin that helps our skin replicate cells correctly and healthily and quickly. Um, and the peptides can be applied topically. It's not collagen, but it helps collagen in the skin. It helps protect the collagen and helps promote collagen production. And then also in the 40s, you begin to use a retinol moisturizer at night, which is retinoic acid, which helps reverse some of the damage the sun has done in accumulation into the skin cells, methylation of the DNA. I'm gonna sound really scientific and doctorly here, but basically it's just a process we want to help the skin produce better cells and prescription strength retinols like tretinoin and retin-A that we hear about all the time for anti-aging and acne actually have the ability to remove precancerous cells. So it's a very powerful topical, perhaps the most powerful one there is for anti-aging. And then of course, a good moisturizer uh, needs to be in place, preferably one that's oil-free unless you have severely dry skin. Why people are getting a consultation here, aren't they? Are you curious about discovering ways of making your life better? Then welcome to my podcast. I'm Bob Nickman, and this is The Exploding Human. Listen in while I talk with all kinds of people in the fields of personal growth, health and healing, alternative therapies, psychology, spirituality, environment, and the future. I'm looking for those answers that make life better for everyone. You'll meet cutting-edge practitioners, doctors, artists, filmmakers, business people, and those who have overcome challenges. The brave, the curious, anyone who's out there helping us humans to explore, expand, and explode. Hey, welcome to The Exploding Human. My name is Bob Nickman. My guest today is Chris Gibson, and we're going to be talking about skin and skin care. First, I'd like to invite you to visit my website, theexplodinghuman.com. Over there, you can listen to episodes, read synopses, see photos of my guests, little bio on myself, and there's a donate button if you'd like to support the show through Patreon. Thank you so much. Also, a YouTube channel, The Exploding Human with Bob Nickman, Ed with Bob Nickman, and there is the Exploding Human Facebook page. All places you can listen to the show. As I said, my guest today is Chris Gibson. He's nationally known. He's been on most of the major television networks talking about cures for acne and uh, skin care. Chris has spent many years in studying skin, skin care, healthy ways to maintain your skin both externally and internally. We're going to talk about all that stuff, and we're going to talk about how he overcame acne. And that became the catalyst for him to begin to study the best ways to take care of our skin. Lots of great information today. Great guy. This is Chris Gibson. Well, I'm with Chris Gibson. I'm not with him. I'm in Los Angeles, and he's in St. Pete, Florida. That's short for St. Petersburg. See, it shows you that I've been there. Uh-huh. And- I'm glad you're on the show, Chris, and uh, we're going to be talking about skin, skin care products to, you know, how to go about, well, you, as you say, it's the skin care conundrum. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, you know, they, they wonder how, what's the best way to take care of my skin? Because let me start with this, this idea, because I know you're a holistic es- esthetician. I said it properly, right? You did. You did. The skin, which people don't realize, I think, is an organ. It's an organ of the body. And how do we take care of that? And I know you have a huge YouTube channel. So let's, I'm going to let you just go here for a couple of minutes because this is a whole new field that I don't know a lot about. So you're the expert. Well, I, you know, how it relates is, especially for people over 30, is that the correlation between health and skin has gotten more and more, I would say popular, but more and more acceptable in the um, mainstream realm of things, especially because of 
uh, sunscreen and skin cancer rates and all that stuff being in the news. And then all the, the scandalous stuff this summer that most everybody knows about products being pulled because that benzene in them, uh, which isn't is poisonous. Um, so a lot of people get overwhelmed and then you've got celebrities putting out skincare lines every 15 minutes. Ellen just came out with one this month. I'm like, who doesn't have a skincare line? So the question then becomes, do I need to pay all this money? Is there really a difference? What's in this? Is it going to work for me? Or I tried some of these products that paid a lot of money for them and they broke me out or they caused my skin issues. So a great deal of my time and energy is spent helping educate folks along those lines on um, right up to where you would need to go to a dermatologist. So if I have someone come to me on my blog and have questions that are beyond what um, I would ever do, then obviously I direct them to a dermatologist because that's where they need to go. So most of the focus uh, on the YouTube channel, it started off with wellness on um, you know, cooking shows. I was doing intermittent fasting to lose some weight. I did a series on that, did really well. And of course, I had my skincare background with acne, the acne free and three days book for which I was on television forever. It seems like eight years I did TV shows on that. Um, it wasn't until I really started talking about anti aging and the fact that I'm 57 and I don't look 57. And I, you know, attribute that to the things that I learned in my 20s because of the acne condition. Um, diet, fitness, type of skincare products, sunscreen, 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 <laughs> um, especially growing up in Texas. So I try to relate it on a personal level to folks um, mm -hmm. through my story of what, you know, you know, we all have a story of how we learn the things that we learn. Very few times do people go into something and it's, you know, I went and just went to school for this and just do this. There's usually some sort of passion for it. So on the channel, I began to talk about products for anti-aging because they're so expensive and there's so many of them. And as I said, celebrities seem to put this stuff out every month. There's somebody new um, and boil it down to what you basically need. So I start with what a basic skincare routine for healthy skin. So some reverse aging, I do get into that and what you absolutely need to have. And it's the ingredients that matter. It's the ingredients and their effectiveness. I say it's one of the taglines of my uh, videos is that um, it's about effectiveness and ingredients, not brand name and price. So there are certain things you need to have in your skincare arsenal that are going to benefit your skin health, um, help you look good at whatever age you're at. I don't really in the business of rolling back the years, although I have to use that terminology because that's what the skincare industry has just hammered into people. Almost everything revolves around looking younger, taking the years off. Um, Personally, I don't want to go back to my 20s. I survived them. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, I hear you. No on hurry one. to look 20 either because it would be really weird. Uh, so I like where I'm, I think part of its attitude and I try to really help people with body image. So, you know, somewhere to come and say, what do I absolutely have to have? It's a little bit different in your 30s and your 40s and your 50s and your 60s, but not much. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the first thing is to make sure you have some sort of consistent routine was what I would tell, what I tell people on that means a good cleanser um, that's appropriate for your skin type and pH. And I tell people a lot of times the way to know is whatever cleanser you're using, if your skin is really tight and kind of dry and squeaky clean afterwards, it's too, it's too, the pH is too low on it. So you need to change uh, to a different cleanser. Uh, and it doesn't matter what skin type you're or what your cleanser is labeled for, because labels can be very misleading when it comes to ingredients. So sulfates, parabens, a lot of folks know to stay away from those now. Uh, they're very harsh chemicals that strip too much oil. Your skin should always feel hydrated and fresh and clean, kind of damp. It should never feel like tight. Um, mm -hmm. So getting that part right is obviously very important, making sure that people don't skip cleansing at night because you've got a day's worth of toxins and touching your skin and irritants from the air on your skin and skipping that and leaving makeup on. I know a lot of the ladies know this already. We got to get the makeup off. Um, so you start with a clean slate and then making sure you give your skin things it needs, which is something to help fight toxins and, and you know oxidants, which would be a vitamin C serum. So I tell people there are like four things you really need in your, in your skincare routine. The first is a vitamin C serum, and that starts in your 30s. 
apply it every morning. It helps brighten your skin. It helps retard and prevent hyperpigmentation and age spots on down the line. It's an antioxidant. It helps keep, uh, it helps protect your skin cells against oxidation and irritants. And then I tell folks they need to, especially as you get into your forties, add peptides, which are amino acids that we produce in our skin that helps our skin replicate cells correctly and healthily and quickly. Um, and the peptides can be applied topically. It's not collagen, but it helps collagen in the skin. It helps protect the collagen and helps promote collagen production. And then also in the 40s, you begin to use a retinol moisturizer at night, which is retinoic acid, which helps reverse some of the damage the sun has done in accumulation into the skin cells, methylation of the DNA. I'm going to sound really scientific and doctorly here, but basically it's just a process. We want to help the skin produce better cells and prescription strength retinols like tretinoin and retin-A that we hear about all the time for anti-aging and acne actually have the ability to remove precancerous cells. So it's a very powerful topical, perhaps the most powerful one there is for anti-aging. And then of course, a good moisturizer uh, needs to be in place, preferably one that's oil-free unless you have severely dry skin. Why people are getting a consultation here, aren't they? Yeah, <laughs> and fantastic. Then, I love and then this. The la- and then the last piece of that is sunscreen and i have a, i'm known for on my channel saying sunscreen 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 have i told you you need to wear sunscreen and you only need an spf of 30 um, to be well protected because you're going to have to reapply it anyway when you get higher than that those products tend both mineral and chemical tend to be irritating kind of greasy uh hard for the skin to absorb and really unnecessary because you're gonna have to reapply them anyway so even though 50 is supposed to last longer it really doesn't because we touch our touch our skin all the time and things get wiped off. So it's just better to not have that false sense of protection and go with a 30. Um, and if you do those things, those basic things, starting in your 30s, you can start them in your 20s. Um, I did. You're going to see a real improvement. Now, as you get into your, your later year, your 40s, mid 40s, 50s, 60s, I often recommend people use a skin exfoliation acid like glycolic acid or lactic acid. And there are a lot of products out there for that. And the reason for that is as we get older, cellular turnover on the surface of our skin really slows down. So those cells like to stay stuck. So you have new skin cells underneath, old skin cells on the outside, which when you're in your 20s and your teens, they slough off very quickly. So they protect your skin from the environment, but they slough off and we get replaced. As we get older, that slows down. That's what leads to dull skin, larger looking pores, oily patches, dry patches. We want to get that old skin off. And those acids are a really good way to do that as a step in your routine. And then, of course, you can go and get skin peels that are stronger versions of those. There are some home versions, 15 to 20 percent. And then over that yearly, usually you need to go to a salon and have that applied by a licensed esthetician or a dermatologist. So it really depends on how advanced the sun damage is. So I really spend a lot of time with the younger folks, 20s, teens, 20s, and 30s, prevention, prevention, prevention. Wear the sunscreen now and you'll be like me, you won't have a lot of damage to have to fix and reverse. So that's kind of the topical side of skincare. That makes sense. (laughs) And yeah, I, a I lot was, of information that I just well, you know, there. it's good information. How often would you do that glycol uh, treatment? It's well, if it's a ser- yeah, if it's a serum, then you'll do that daily. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's a peel product, and there are a lot of those out there that are slightly stronger, like the Ordinary, which is a skincare brand, has a peel solution. You two to three times a week. Um, I'm not a big. I'm not a big. There's my dog, of course. <laughs> I'm not a big um, fan of, of uh, scrubs because they're very often the pieces in the scrubs, the, the items that people buy, there's like plastic shards of nuts, you know, like they use seeds um, and that can actually tear the skin, leave little tiny tears, which is damaging and you can lead to breakouts and, and tealing dictasias, which are spider veins, which people don't want. So we don't want to cause a lot of inflammation people tend to overdo it with the scrub. You know, it's like a pan. They're like, <laughs> and uh, it's, it's really, um, 
it can leave the skin raw and you can get an infection. So it's just better to stay away from those. I think things like the glycolic acid, perhaps a buff puff, which is a sponge designed to exfoliate the skin lightly is fine. So I'm a big proponent of exfoliation, very important step, but don't overdo it because it, you can, you can cause more problems than you're solving actually. My wife has one of those sponges. I always yeah, wonder why she had I've that. used one since I was 20. No, I take that back. I think my dermatologist recommended that to me at about 18. Um, so I've been using those for a very long time. And it's just one of those things that helps keep your skin smooth, helps get that old skin off, toxins, anything like that that's, that's uh, it on feels, your skin. It feels really good. It kind of vibrates a little afterwards, very slightly, where you feel like it's your skin's going, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, it's invigorating. Now, you we started with topical, which mm -hmm. I think is great stuff, obviously. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk a little bit about internal, if we can do that too, because yes. I would, I thought the first thing you were going to say was water. Drink a lot uh, of water. Uh, yeah, yeah. there's some things that are absolute givens. You need to be hydrated, um, watch alcohol intake, things like that. Sugar, sugary foods and juices. Obviously, sugar is a big problem as it, it degrades collagen in the body, it slows down this collagen production. And so a diet high in refined sugar, I just have a video coming out on this, actually a de-aging video uh, that comes out today, this afternoon, talking about that very thing that sugar is one of the big problems to, to try to cut it out. And then I go, I know, I know it's the holidays, not easy to do, right? So studies have shown that if you change your diet uh, to a more mineral and vitamin rich diet, but like the Mediterranean style diet, you're eating more leafy greens, lean meats, you take a lot of the sugar foods out of your diet. Uh, within about eight weeks, you can reverse up to three years of biological aging. Um, so that's how powerful, <clears throat> excuse me, that's how powerful that is. And what that means for your skin is because skin takes a while for us to see the improvements topically or internally over the course of that eight weeks the collagen cells, the skin cells, all of the, the, your organs are producing healthier cells because of that. You begin to see that difference about eight weeks out, see and feel the difference. Now, if you add to that things like fitness three days a week, uh, 30 minutes a day is all it takes of, you know, moderate activity, walking, swimming, playing fetch with the dog, whatever. Like I've got two of those obviously running around here. So staying active is really important because fitness and physical activities help your body produce stronger cells. We want to prevent those telomeres from shortening because when those, those telomeres shortened and they're part of the DNA structure of your body, the skin cell life is less. So it makes them less. So we don't want to fray the ends of those communicators to the cells about when they should re replicate. So we're basically a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy. And if you remember, I don't know about you, I'm old, but we had a machine back in the day that you, I forget what that thing was called, but anyway, you put the thing on a barrel and it went through the ink. And yeah, it, it was called a, a mimeograph machine. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And, and that ink was that blue, was, blue ink. And it smelled really weird. So toxic, yeah. but yeah, fantastic. So, <laughs> yes. Yeah. But you would notice <clears throat> over because that, <clears throat> excuse me, because the original was getting damp. The photocopy would look worse and worse and worse. And you'd have to get a new original and put it on there. And even today, same thing. If we make photocopies of a photocopy of a photocopy, yeah. they look worse. So. What, what I'm saying is the way to slow that process down is to do these things that help you produce stronger cells and produce a stronger body. <clears throat> so we want to reduce inflammation. That all helps do that. Diet is a big player in that. Sugar increases inflammation. We know that too much sugar in the diet can spike acne breakouts, rosacea, eczema flare-ups, psoriasis. All those things can be triggered by certain sugars in the diet. So it's all about the glycemic index, that big spike that we get when we eat sweets, sometimes it sets our immune system off. So that was what it was for me with acne, by the way. You so, had acne at one oh, point? I had it from 11 till I was 24. It's what started my whole skincare journey. I, that's yeah. usually the case. The wounded become the healers. And, yeah. <laughs> and um, so what is, I'm sure there's people listening to this that either have acne or know someone that struggles with with that and it's it's painful it doesn't look good it, it's you know, we it, all know. It, it, it's it's really impactful on your self-image 
especially the younger you are, the younger you are, or the people who get adult acne or adult onset acne now in their 40s and 50s are freaking out because they never had bad skin, quote unquote. It's not bad skin, but, you know, they never had the issue. And so, yeah, a lot of what I'm talking about is helpful for that. Taking sugar out of the diet, certainly dairy is a problem for a lot of people, and they don't realize it, especially women. Um, you know, making sure again, you're using a face wash. That's not taking too much oil off your skin. Everybody thinks, Oh, less oil, less breakouts. No, that's not how it works. If you strip your skin of oil, it's going to turn on the oil factor and you're going to produce more. And the bacteria that lives on all of us that digest that. So we're not some gloopy oily mess all the time is the thing that causes the reaction to the immune system. They see that bacteria going on, gets trapped down in cells. And so if you dry your skin out, you've got a lot of dead surface skin cells trapping that oil, even though you think you've done the right thing. So again, with acne, it really is about speeding up cellular turnover. So things like glycolic acid or retinol, like adipoline, steaming the skin with a hot washcloth or a steamer for 10 minutes every day before you do your morning or evening facial cleanse can help the pores empty of that. We know that niacinamide, which is a it's niacinamide, niacinamide, niacin, niacin, niacinamide is may is niacin based. So it's a vitamin from vitamin B on the surface of the skin. It helps regulate oil production and helps kind of liquefy the sebum that gets trapped down in the pore and hardens, which is what causes the whole problem in the first place with the breakouts and cystic acne. So there's a lot of things you can do to help with that. Um, but you have to kind of be aware of over irritating and inflaming the skin because inflammation is what your immune system is reading as the problem anyway. So mm -hmm. this is why a lot of times people will go on a product line like proactive, or they'll go to the store and buy a bunch of acne products. And this seems to get better for a couple of weeks. And they have a major blowout of breakouts because that dead skin cell has been sitting there on the top of the skin, trapping that oil. It's like, it's like a, a, Trojan horse <laughs> okay, ready to spring forth. So it's better to have a very light routine to try to reduce that inflammation, both through your diet and through topical treatments. And that way you prevent scarring, which is the, the number one uh, goal of estheticians and dermatologists when it comes to people who are suffering with acne is to prevent scarring. That's the focus. We don't want, because the scars stick around the acne we can we can treat. So no picking, no poking, no prodding, no being Dr. Pimple Popper uh, <laughs> on yourself, you know, not good. <laughs> and people get it on their back too. It's like covered yeah. on people's backs. Did you have yeah. that too? No, actually I had, I only had it on my face and the, the upper part of my neck where the hair follicles are, mm -hmm. you know, cause guys, we all have them, even if they're invisible, but guys tend to have more visible hair follicles right up to our eyes. <laughs> if you yeah. look in the light, you can see them. Um, on my back, I had dry skin. So I had the, the, I went on Accutane, which dries that up, which made this dry skin issue for me just worse. Um, I finally solved that by taking collagen peptide powder uh, form in my tea. And I did an eight week test on that. Uh, my whole life I have, I have, they're in the, in the bathroom. I have these long stick things to put lotion <laughs> on my back. Cause I, my friends all know I'll be in the elevator or wherever it's scratching. I don't have that problem anymore since I started taking the peptide. So those were very helpful to me. So there is uh, obviously some anecdotal scientific evidence that peptides help with skin, hair and nails. We've known for a long time that helps with joint health. Uh, my mm -hmm. own mom was on them way back in the, in the nineties for her joint issues uh, glucosamine and then the peptides, collagen peptides. So for me, it really helped with the dryness. I, it's amazing. I don't have that issue anymore. So I'm like really happy. So the, the, what I think happens with those is there, most of the formulations, there are 19 amino acids in those powders, hydrolyzed uh, collagen proteins. And if you're deficient in one, say one that's for hair, they say you're deficient in hair and your nails are weak and you replace that with the one of those 19 or three of those 19 peptide amino acids is what you're missing. You see that improvement and people do. Some people get it, have arthritis, find amazing improvement by taking those. Some people with dry skin issues or skin issues see a big difference taking them that way. So 
you know, that, that's my, my opinion is not scientific and on that's personal, what I experience and what I've seen people experience and, and the reason for the different benefits people seem to get. It's not like everybody gets the same benefits from it. Yeah. Well, that is the thing about all this kind of healthy things. You've got to use your, uh, your own body as a little bit of a test tube and, and experiment a little bit and see what works. Now, my wife started uh, taking collagen powder, made a huge difference. Huge. Yeah, she was yeah. like, my skin feels like it's going to tear. It's like thin. It feels weird. And she started, uh, I don't know, I guess she did some her research. Maybe she watched you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and she started. Uh, is- so we both do it now. And it's, uh, you know, just mix it in with some stuff. It's it, great. It really is helpful. I mean, for a lot of people who have, they don't have, uh, inflammatory arthritis they just have i guess good old age arthritis where they've been laying on the bed all night or sitting they get up and they're stiff feeling um it seems to help with that with a lot of folks too the flexibility and i i think part of that is it's hydrating the joints it's hydrating i think and keeping um the collagen production at higher than it otherwise would be so you know i guess the the the, the long of it or the short of it actually would be, I'm 57. I'm not on blood pressure medicine, you know, knock on wood, anything can happen to anybody. You can get sick, but I don't have any major things going on. Um, you know, cholesterol is good. I feel good. I'm able to get around. If I fall down, I'm able to get up. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing breaks so far. (laughs) Um, so, you know, I'm able to chase the animals, um, that we heard in the background (laughs) when they're running around the house. You know, and it's just, I think I've been very consistent with it. So I preach a lot of consistency. I preach a lot of patience on the channel because people want instant fixes. You know, you don't get weight over, overweight overnight. Your skin doesn't get yeah. tired looking and dried out overnight. You have to give things time to work. Um, and you're spending a lot of money on skincare. So I tell people, take a selfie. You know, we have the ability to do that now when you start a new regimen. Take one, 30 days later, take another one, 60 days later, you need to give things at least 60 days, take another one and put the picture side by side and see how much difference it's making. It can be really surprising because as we don't see it as the, you know, usually we hear from other people, oh, your skin looks really good or uh, you look more rested or, you know, a lot of times when people have not done anything and they start doing something, it's very noticeable. Uh, if you've been taking care of your skin and you want to up your game, you know, you may not see as quick an improvement, like visible, but if you do the selfies, you will see the change, you know. So it's it's all, it's true for all of it. Even the red light therapy that we have now, the devices that they're coming out with to help, you know, RF therapy, radio frequency, all therapy, ultrasound therapy, all of that to try to warm those lower layers of the skin to produce more collagen there, which helps thicken skin and gets rid of that saggy. I don't even have that. I do. Know? I need to ask you about that next. I don't have that. <laughs> look at, my, look at the, my neck here. Yeah, it, it really is just, oh, I don't have that either. I got a little <laughs> bit of a turkey thing going on, but I am 68. So, well, that's not, you don't look 68. Yeah. So, so look for, as we go through the next year, I, I keep telling people, I, my, if I predict the future, I see that devices are probably going to become the mainstay of skincare and the topicals are going to become the extra where it's kind of the reverse right now. Because oh, okay. if you use, if you use microcurrent, you can help a lot of that loosening. What's that? Explain that. It's a uh, microcurrent is where electrical current goes through the skin and stimulates the muscle underneath without stretching the skin. So I, I also have yoga for the neck. I do a, an exercise that I did a whole full video on face yoga, uh, which can be very helpful. If you think about people you've known your whole life, celebrities or friends or family that have done yoga, they don't have loose anything. <laughs> I think they could be 100 and they don't have loose skin yeah, anywhere. Don't you so, just hate them for it? <laughs> yeah, for being consistent. Yeah. So, so but the, you know, um, microcurrent can be very helpful. The, uh, RF therapy can be very helpful in stimulating, kind of tightening that back up. Um, you know, the, all those things. There are neck tightening creams that work temporarily for hydration and things like that that can help, but it really is stimulating the collagen. And that diet is so important as you get older. Things like the collagen peptides, taking K2, 
vitamin K2, which you pretty much have to take in a supplement. It's very difficult to get enough of it from food. That's super important because it distributes, it helps the body distribute calcium efficiently where it doesn't end up in your arteries. It ends up in your brain where you need it in your bones. It stays. And so a lot of ladies need to be on K2 plus D3. That's really uh, usually how you can get it makes a huge difference. If your bones begin to shrink, your skin will sag. So we want to preserve bone density as much as we can, not just for looks, but just for, you know, health reasons. And so, and I don't think I've had a lot of bone loss. In fact, I know I haven't before my mom passed, um, we went and she was doing bone density tests because she had osteoporosis. So I was privy to a lot of things. They actually did a bone density test on me. I was 47 and I came back with a bone density of a 28 year old. That so, must have felt nice to see those results. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't have to pay for the test. <laughs> <laughs> and I think they just did it because I, I was curious, you know, well, what is that? How does that work? So, you know, there's a plus and minus that they give you on bone density. And, and they asked me, well, what is your, I've always been very fit. I've always had some sort of fitness going on. Um, I'll fall off the wagon for a few months, but usually I go right back on light, light, light weights, um, resistance training, not to build and get bulky, but just to maintain my strength. One of my big things, I don't know why, I think as a child, I, I saw people that were incapacitated, had to be pushed around in wheelchairs. And I saw, as I was in my twenties and thirties, I saw people my age in that situation. And I'm like, how the hell does that happen to somebody? So one of these always been strength training in my legs. Um, I was a skinny kid in high school, but I got, I got put on the football team to kick. I have really strong legs, even though I have really, well, they're not skinny anymore. I was like, but <laughs> I was a really skinny kid. And so it was, was surprising to the fitness coaches that my leg strength was what, it, you know, they'd have a football player lifting weights with his legs, two, three, 20, 250 pounds. And I could do the same thing. And I didn't have those giant muscles. So I've tried to preserve that because I want to be able to get around for me. Mobility is everything. Yeah, it's fantastic. You know, and it's, you know, it's funny. I was, I was with somebody um, who also kind of is interested in these topics and we were, st we were at a light across the street from somebody else who was overweight and kind of, you know, not crippled, but, you know, uh, bad posture, looked very ill. We were about the same age as we were. And he said, it's amazing to see that guy because it doesn't have to be that way. Right. It's not, it's not, it's just, it has to do with what you're talking about, diet and lifestyle. I'm not taking away from the fact that things happen to people. People get Yeah, I'm not talking about that either. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, but, but they're there. I know for a fact that I, you know, I know people that the reason they're like that is a sedentary lifestyle. They really just didn't take care of themselves, you know, too much drinking, too much smoking, too much food or what have you. And, um, you know, they get to a point where they just not move. It's like a vicious cycle. It gets harder to break that cycle uh, if they can't get around anyway. So you're it's hard to lose weight and feel, you know, so it's it's more of a it's more of a struggle for those folks. So I again I prevent I, I preach prevention as much as I can. Start now. People will send me a thing. I'm 18 years old. Should I be doing skincare? Yes. I'm 23 years old. Should I be using sunscreen? Yes. You should have been using it since you were five. But um, you know, I don't tell people to wait. Uh, you know, I I just it's easier to to prevent it than it is to try to reverse all that stuff. Let's talk about sunscreen for a second, because it's a huge product. It's, you know, it's all over the place. You can get it, you know, almost anywhere. I can't stand putting that stuff on my skin. I hate the way it feels. I can't yeah. stand the way it smells. Uh, I, when I go to the beach, you know, I live, you know, kind of near the beach here in California. So when I go to the beach, I do put it on, particularly on my bald head, because <laughs> I don't want that to, but I, I can't stand it. Yeah. And it's what, what do I do? You know, what's the, you know, and I hear you're supposed to put it on maybe an hour before you go in the sun. So it's absorbed. Tell me, so let's talk sunscreen for a second. Basically it's divided. There are chemical sunscreens, which are absorbed into the upper layers of the skin. Some of the ingredients in them are, can be absorbed into the bloodstream as we've heard and can cause some problems, uh, but they are working on getting those out of products. Uh, but basically 
you do need to put those in advance. Usually 15 or 20 minutes is enough. It doesn't need to be an hour. And then you're protected, but you have to reapply them if you sweat or touch or rub your skin because they still rub off. Mineral sunscreens, which are zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, um, <clears throat> sit on the surface of the skin and actually block the sun from coming in. So I'm a proponent of zinc. I'm a proponent of mineral sunscreens because, and they've come a long way. I used to not like them because they were white cast and they were greasy, but a lot of brands like Neutrogena, Elta MD, um, not your banana boats, not, not, not those, not the, not the mainstream stuff you see in a Walmart or Target or whatever, when you come in, yeah. I'm sure California is like Florida. They sell sunscreen to tourists here like it was gold. <laughs> and so you want to look for, the mineral versions if you can can get them and if you have issues with sunscreen and again look at your spf because usually people are putting on 50s when i hear what you're saying 50 is not necessary you want to look at the child or infant version of the sunscreen because the formulation for those is much milder the ingredients they use are able to be tolerated by very sensitive skin like on infants, and you get the same SPF factor. And usually there's no fragrance in them, so a lot of the extras aren't in there. So that's what I tell people to try. Uh, there are now sunscreen powders there for you. Um, and I see this more and more here in Florida. You can buy clothing that is very it's heat friendly. It doesn't, it wicks for mm -hmm. you and it keeps you cool, but it protects your skin from the sun without even using a sunscreen. Hats, of course, you can do those as well. That's a big thing here in Florida. The big, I saw Panama Jack hats, <laughs> the guys wear, um, you know, people say, wow, I look silly. No, you don't look silly. You look like you take care of yourself. Yeah, I never cared about looking silly. I, I used to wear a snowmobile suit in the winter when I'd go out instead of a stylish jacket. Think about ski suits in the 80s and 90s, the neon <laughs> suit, ski suits. Yeah, I had a lime green one. You could have seen me coming down the mountain a yeah. mile away. And like, who cares? So, right? Yeah, <laughs> you're warm. So, uh, I mean, I when you go that, out, and I love using the uh, the kids stuff. I I do that with some other products. And, yeah, and, it really and, does help. People are yeah. shocked. They go, "Why didn't I think of that?" And I'm like, "Well, because we all assume sunscreen is sunscreen is sunscreen, and it really isn't." Now, what about the sun itself? I mean, we talk about vitamin D and D three and. You know, and I, this is what I think, okay, well, I'm born uh, onto a planet with the sun and they didn't have sunscreen back, you know, thousands of years right. ago. Is it really that bad? I mean, it, I guess the ozone has been degraded. Of it's, course. It, it is. There's a lot more strength in the element, the sunlight element. And you have to think about people. Um, if you go back and study this, and I did a lot of this in skincare history back in the day and and people weren't out during the day, um, <laughs> you know, they timed their rituals and their hunting in the evening or in the morning. And there's not to say people didn't have thick tan skin yeah. from the sun, but they also had the problems that went along with that. And people didn't live very long. <laughs> either yeah, so sometimes up to like yeah. 25 years old some of them yeah <laughs> yeah you know the average age and what 1875 was 38 so you know here in the states so that just shows you it vitamin d we get it from food it's fortified you're going to get some even with sunscreen on that's that is a unfortunate myth that um you could use so much sunscreen that you block out all the vitamin D and it gives you cancer. That was the one before the pandemic. And mm -hmm. then it was, well, you'll get COVID if you do that. Well, no, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you can supplement vitamin D very easily. Get some gummies if you're really that worried about it. But, you know, the, there's more of an issue of too much. You've taken too much vitamin D. Um, yes, your skin processes sunlight, uses sunlight to convert and create vitamin D. But again, it's in almost all fortified foods that we have. You can take the supplements if you're really that concerned about it. You can go get a blood test uh, that they can tell you what you're deficient in now. You know, they can tell you what you're deficient in in anything anymore. I love yeah. that. I so, think. You know, so, I think we're, I love you know, that. You know, technology teaches us we need to do this. We want to live longer and have a healthier life. And then technology also is giving us options in order to do those things we need to do right now so that we don't create 
a cascade of other problems. So it really is common sense. I was wondering when you mentioned pH for the skin, hmm. is there an ideal pH that we're, uh, that we go for and how, how do we test it? Really a range and you're not going to know. Um, there's a lot of conjecture about what that range is too. Most products now have been designed not to change the pH of your skin too much. Things that change the pH of your skin are things like sulfates. There's chemicals uh, that, that have a different pH than your skin's natural pH. So then we've really, the skincare industry has moved away from that. Other than if you're like using bar soap, that's not a good thing to do. Um, but your pH, you don't you use toners. We used to have toners to rebalance the pH on our yes, skin. I, I, yeah, I've seen those. Uh, you don't have to use those anymore, really, with face washes anymore. If you're using a, a face wash, um, I can't think of one. Uh, your physoderm was a big one, remember, back in the day yep. because it was it was the right pH. So it's a range on folks, and you're not going to really know what your range is. There's not, like, a way to know unless you have it tested by the dermatologist. There are people whose body chemistry produces a weird pH uh, where they're very sensitive to a lot of products uh, and you can get that tested, but you'd have to have them. You would have to have that tested. Most everything you buy will tell you if it, if it has product in it or ingredients that are going to affect pH, it will tell you what the pH is on the product of the okay. back. You'll see that. So I don't want to, I hesitate to give out numbers because people tend to run with that as the norm. And it's like, like, yeah. it's like that nine, there is a range and I could give it, but it's like the temperature thing. You know, we used to think 98.4 was nor or six was normal. Yeah. Now we know it's 97 <laughs> to like 98.8 or nine. Yeah. It can be normal. My, my normal temperature is 97.7. It's like a radio station. So I'm not sick, I, you know, and as you get older, your body temperature tends to decrease. So you know, we're moving away from these things that we've taken as hard and steady facts for everybody. And it really is about the individual's body chemistry, the, you know, the, the level of fitness and your health. Let's so. talk about soap for a second. Um, like you mentioned bar soap and <sighs> you just, you smell the perfume in it and it's, it's it is know. not good for your skin. What, what, what is, let's say somebody wants the simplest, you don't have to even name a product, but the simplest version of how to wash your face. Uh, what would that be? What two, would that look like? Yeah. Two uh, quarter size worth of product, two minutes using your fingertips to swirl, you know, no more than two minutes and then rinse. Well, and the and product would be. I, I like. I personally like gel. Um, I like gel versions of face washes. They're made with glycerin, water, dimethicone sometimes in there, and um, maybe olive oil. Um, those type. Those type of ingredients. If you see sulfates, um, that's basically a detergent. <laughs> and unless yeah. you have you know, worked on your car all day and you have thick, heavy grease on your skin, you don't need some, you do need that for that. If you have that yeah. other type of face wash is probably not going to break that oil down. Uh, but then after you get, you would want to do a double cleanse, what we call a double cleanse. You'd want to use the stronger one to try to break off the, the thick oil and dirt that you have, and then re re cleanse with the balancing cleanser. And that goes back to what I said in the beginning. If you, Basically, if you have normal to dry skin, you, you need a creamy type of cleanser. If you have oily skin, a clear foaming cleanser that will help lift and break down some of that oil on your skin, but never with any of these should your skin feel dry and tight afterwards, like, like that, or squeaky clean. You yeah. should be able to like, like a glass. No, should never be like that. I remember when I was a kid, I don't know how I just remembered this. I was my grandfather, who was a Russian immigrant. He said he'd never used soap on his face. He goes, he goes, never use soap. And he only used cold water and he would just wash his face with cold water. I mean, he, he looked fine, but um, that was his theory. And I don't know where he got it, but the idea of no soap, I kind of liked. Um, so that was his thing. But then he would put on Old Spice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, my grandparents did a lot of weird stuff. You know, I, I, I had one who who ran her false teeth through the dishwasher. So, 
Oh, I love that. That's hilarious. That is a great idea. <laughs> like, I was like, that's not how that's supposed to work, but okay. <laughs> now, what about cryo? You hear, you hear a lot about that. I, I did do one of those ice baths once. And uh, when I got out of that water, I can't even tell you how great I felt inside uh, and my skin. It was yeah, incredible. There, you know, there, there, there are old world um, skin invigorating you know, we have the saunas, Japanese hot baths, where they raise your body temperature slowly over about 40 minutes uh, to the point where any virus <laughs> that you might have would, would just take a leap, you know, it's gone. Um, and then, of course, cold sits baths. So there's a lot of a lot of old world uh, techniques that can help invigorate the skin. Basically, what happens when you do the cold is you it the capillaries in your skin shrink at first from the cold mm -hmm. they pull back sure. so there's a tightening and then as your body temperature returns or as it returns your your surface temperature they expand larger so you get a rush of nutrients and oxygen and what you're feeling that feeling in your skin is the oxygenation happening it's sort of like if you've ever been really sedentary or for whatever reason um, you live in a client. I know North when I lived in Pennsylvania, you didn't do anything for six months. So when you went, if you didn't stay in shape at the gym or at home, when you got back out there on the bicycle or you did any sort of cardio, any sort of uh, activity like that, your skin got itchy and red, like, like it would flush yeah, because all of the oxygenation and nutrients were getting back to the surface of the skin. That's a similar process. Well, you know a lot of stuff about this. That's fantastic. 34 years. 34 years. Yeah, it's amazing. And if for those, I know this is an audio only uh, show, but you, you got to see uh, Chris's skin. It's fantastic. Go to his YouTube channel to do that, yeah. I guess. We can see. Definitely go to my YouTube channel. Yeah. And that is that channel is called, let's get that out there. It's easy, Chris Gibson. Chris Gibson Live, you can type that in. But if you type in Chris Gibson, it's the number one thing that comes up. So Okay. It took It took a while to get there, but. It is. Well, I mean, that's impressive. I think that's fantastic. Uh, do you think you have more um, men or women listening to your channel? It's about 50, 50. It tilts depending on whatever focus I have in a month when I'm doing more men's skincare or men's issues like beard and hair and all that stuff. It will tilt a little bit more towards the guys. Um, the anti-aging more so to the women, certainly product you know, product reviews and um, breaking stuff down. Guys tend to be more uh, issue centric. So if they're having a specific issue, uh, then they tend to become, they come in and get their information and go. It doesn't necessarily that they're into skincare. They just are trying to solve an issue. Yeah. It's, it's more issue than uh, vanity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, oh, this is a, a question I just thought of. What about diff different uh, skin colors? Like, for instance, you know, uh, uh, Asian uh, people or uh, African-American or, you know, just, just well, the do darker, you deal with that? Yeah, I do. And it really the, the, the biggest thing comes with that is the hydration level. Darker skin types tend to be drier sometimes or more oily. So there's a bigger range okay. um, for that. So we deal a lot with that. Um, the other thing is the hyperpigmentation issue, you know, skincare acids, things like kojic acid and hydroquinine, which is, or hydroquinine, that's how they really say it. Um, you know, the FDA has sort of like put the chops on that because there were some issues with it bleaching skin. So oh, yeah, if you're using about you know, <laughs> one, one area of the body, you may lighten it and it may look very different than another area of the body. But I mean, skin is basically skin. The difference is in the amount of melanin production based on your ethnic history. Um, so, you know, it's, it really is the same steps, but mm -hmm. there are some differences, um, you know, with the hyperpigmentation, that's the biggest thing and the propensity for keloid scarring from acne and other problems that more melanin you have in your skin, um, the more likely you are to have a keloid or a raised scar um, than other people. So it really is it just, and then there's individual stuff that has to be taken into account. So it's like genetics. So it just really, it's really the same 
Although I would say um, for, and I do get that question and I do have people specific uh, want to know specifically what they should do. Usually um, it's hydration, more hydration, the darker the skin. Um, and because melanin, melanin is, is a, um, a skin protectant. So it does thicken, it does make skin thicker uh, and drier, like knees and elbows and things like that. Um, it also is slower to exfoliate itself. So, you know, things like glycolic acid, that's going to be okay. Lactic acid products like that are going to help. Lotions will help speed that process of keeping the skin nice and even in color and smooth and bright. Um, but then the skincare acids you have to be careful with, like, like I said, hydroquinine, kojic acid, tranexamic acid uh, can be a problem for some folks. Um, but I usually recommend, you know, they use like alpha arbutin. Um, you know, there are acids out there that are very mild that will do the same thing over time. So much great information on a topic I know, knew very little about. So thanks so much for being on the show. And folks, go to Chris Gibson on YouTube. He is a, a wealth of knowledge. If you want great skin, this is the guy. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Much thanks to you folks for listening in to The Exploding Human. Check out the website, theexplodinghuman.com, YouTube, The Exploding Human with Bob Nickman, and The Exploding Human Facebook page. Once again, I want to thank Chris Gibson for a very enjoyable and informative talk on skin and skin care. Check him out on YouTube and his blog. Thanks so much for listening in. Have a great day.